Okay, so we're going to do another one where we're talking about discontinuities, but this time instead of a graph, we're going to use a piecewise function. So I have these three pieces. This is not defined at negative 2 and 2, and I have these two values that are plugging things in. So one way that I could tell if it's discontinuous or not it would be to graph it, but instead of graphing it, I'm going to show you a way that you can do this one algebraically. Now first, let's take a look at the first one. This first one here can be simplified. So I'm going to take this and factor the top and bottom. I can do special factoring formulas for each one. I can do a difference of cubes for the top one. For difference of cubes, you identify your a and b. Your a in this case would be x and your b is going to be 2 since 2 cubed equals 8. When you use the formula, it's going to be x minus 2 and then you're going to do a squared, which is x squared, plus ab, which is plus 2x, and then plus b squared, which is going to be a 4. On the bottom, we have the difference of squares, x minus 2, x plus 2. What I notice right away from this is that the x minus 2's are going to cancel. Anytime you have that situation happening where you can cancel out a factor like that from the top and the bottom, whatever actually makes that one equal to zero, that's going to automatically be a whole. So right now, I know that there's going to be a whole, so I have a whole at x is equal to negative 2. What I'm left with is this part down below, x plus 2. I can't cancel that because this, whenever you do difference of cubes, the other part you're left with is going to be a non-reducible polynomial, which means I can't factor it. So because of that, no matter what, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote. So I have a VA, a vertical asymptote, at x is equal to negative 2. Now, what I know about uh, removable and non-removable discontinuities, if I have a vertical asymptote, definitely that's going to be one where no matter what, if I assign a point to it, I have a point right here at 4, but that's not going to make a difference because I have a vertical asymptote there. So therefore, discontinuities, I know for sure I'll have one at x is equal to negative 2, and this one right here is going to be considered non-removable, non-removable discontinuity, because again, it's a vertical asymptote. But what about the hole? Can I f fill in that hole? Will that be considered discontinuous? Well, in order to determine that, I need to actually take the limit. I need to find out what's happening. So this remaining function here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 2, and I'm going to see if it matches up with 3. Now if it does, if the limit here does match 3, then I know it's going to be continuous uh, at that point. So let's check it out. We're going to do x squared plus 2x plus 4 over x plus 2 because the other part canceled, and I can plug 2 in there. I'm not going to be dividing by 0. So let's see what happens. When I put 2 in there for all the x's, two, I can just plug it in now um, because of that, since I'm not dividing by 0. So I'm putting in 2 for all the x's. I'm checking the limit out as x approaches 2. When I do that, I'm going to get 4 plus 4 plus 4. So that's going to be 12 on top over 4 on the bottom, which is going to be 3. Now this matches the value that you have over there. Both of these are equal to 3. So because of that, we can say that the graph is still going to be continuous. The hole is actually going to be plugged up at that point because the limit from both sides equals 3. We're filling in. Uh, with a 3, so therefore it's going to be continuous. In the notes for this section, I actually showed the graph, and you can see graphically how you would do that, but I wanted to show you that it is possible that you can do these problems also algebraically.